All right. I've got a beast of a machine in front of me, guys, and you'd be excited to check it out. So let's start gaming. So there are a ton of gaming laptops out there and uh, the MSI G76 Raider, which you see right in front of you, is one that packs a lot of punch. And I think MSI has done a fantastic job with this device. You've got something that is 17.3 inches in terms of the display. It's not just a regular display. It is a 360 hertz display with three millisecond response time, which means some ultra fast gaming with this bad boy. I mean, it is really, really nice, but there's so much more underneath the hood right here with this device. Now, in terms of weight, you're looking at something that roughly is around six pounds, but it feels really light and comfortable in comparison, by the way, uh, I would say, uh, but it packs in so many more features. So let's run down a few of the things here. So you've got the Core i9 processor here. You've got the 11980K. Uh, this thing comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM. We have a terabyte of uh, storage and it of course runs an RTX 3080. And I wanna give a big shout out to Intel for sending this over. So I could definitely review and spend some time on this laptop. Now that configuration is about 3,299 bucks. So it's expensive. You still can upgrade this and it's a really easy laptop to upgrade. All you have to do is take out all the screws at the bottom. Thankfully, all the screws are the same so you don't have to put them in order. But in terms of replacing parts, you can add an extra NVMe and you can go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. I have 32, so you can spend more money separately to go ahead and do that. But the way the laptop looks and feels is something that adds to it as well. You've got a SteelSeries keyboard here with RGB lighting, which makes a huge difference. It feels so much better. It feels like a keyboard that I know as a gamer this is something I'll use as opposed to some other gaming laptops that just have really clunky keyboards altogether. Now the keys have some functionality on the very top, which you can access with quick function. You've got your SteelSeries button there to uh, open up the SteelSeries menu. You've also got your fan button, so you can actually change the fan speeds manually while you're gaming to, of course, extremely uh, high and to silent mode. Then you've got your quick access to some just quick menus, as well as also your aim assist if you need it. So I definitely need that. Now it's got speakers on the side and uh, then you've got the trackpad that's centered towards the left. Now it's a very good trackpad if you're using it to browse the web and all that kind of stuff. For gaming, of course, you're gonna be using your gaming mouse, uh, which is of course just standard. Now ports. It's got a slew of ports around the device. So we take a look at the right-hand side. We've got two USB 3.1 ports, full SD card slot here. On the left-hand side, there is a uh, USB-C port, USB 3.1 headphone jack. And at the back, we also have a few more. We've got mini display port, Thunderbolt, Ethernet, HDMI, and the proprietary power plug. So that being said, this is still a big boy. It's a gaming laptop, which means performance is what we care about. The first thing I want to talk about is heat and temperature. Uh, I did do some extensive gaming on here, played, I tried to play uh, Cyberpunk 2077 at its max. And temperature wise, I only got up to about 110 degrees. Now, this actually wasn't at the max fan speed, but I'll say, it was the second to the highest level. Now you've got a lot of vents around the device at the bottom, on the sides, at the back, so it blows air out. It's gonna be loud, that's just standard affair. Uh, but it's actually not too bad. And you've got a lot of different settings we can, you can change here. You've got extreme performance, balance, silent, and super battery. So while you're gaming, I would say you probably can go between balance and extreme to get the kind of best kind of performance here. Speaking of gaming, right? That's the main thing we care about, 360 Hertz. Now, normally I would play something like Counter-Strike just to show you how that we can hit that and you can definitely do, but I started off with Doom Eternal, which is a game that of course looks gorgeous on this here. Um, and I played a game at its max settings, which is Ultra Nightmare. And I was still able to get up to about 176 frames per second which is great. And one of the best things is that the keyboard didn't feel like it was gonna overheat. So one thing I've noticed with other slimmer 
uh, gaming laptops that either run a Core i9 or a Core i7 is that the keyboard felt super hot. This didn't feel that way and performance was really good. Doing 176 frames per second at max playing Doom Eternal on this device, uh, max settings, 360 hertz uh, display, which is a 1080 display, is really good. That's a really, really good performance. I'm gonna be showing you just max performance across the board. Then you take a game like um, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, Shadow of the Tomb Raider ran the benchmark test. We did about 110 frames per second at its highest setting on this device. Again, that is really, really good. So some really solid performance all the way through. You could see that. And to me, that's, that's amazing. The fact that you can play a game like that and push it to its limits and it just runs really comfortable on this device. Now, of course, Call of Duty Mobile, which can be uh, you know, a misnomer in terms of just performance left and right. I was still able to do about 90, sometimes even went up to about 100, depending uh, on the setting. But again, just showing you what Call of Duty looks like and feels like. 360 hertz on a shooter is great. Some really great backdrop there for me to work with. Looks really good, felt really good playing the shooter on a 360 hertz display. So I do like that about it. Now, the last game that we went ahead and played, of course, was Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk is a tough one and it's max settings on this device, 65 frames per second. That's what I got. If I dropped it down to middle settings, I could get about 95 frames per second. It's just a really hard game to push, and it definitely pushed the limits of this device. And that's why I tested the temperatures, and I said I got about 110 max. Uh, it wasn't super hot. It didn't feel like it was burning. I like that. Now you've got this uh, you know, RGB stripe here, which you can change. I kind of just leave it on just you know, cycling here so you can go through the different colors, which is nice. The speakers are good. They're not too loud. I wish, wish they were much louder. Uh, if they use the Dyna audio system, which is good, but nothing too crazy for me here. Now, the one thing I will say that I do like is the super battery mode, which is when you're using this for browsing the web and things like that. You can get about four hours of battery life, maybe even five. Uh, depending on how much you're using. So when it comes to things that I would say are negatives on the device, uh, number one, I wish there was more than one Thunderbolt port. I wish there's well, at least two. The other USB Type-C should be Thunderbolt instead of just one. The display is not as bright as I would like, maybe because of course it's 360 hertz. Performance of the display is great for gaming, but it's still not as bright as I would like it to be. On that side, I did mention the audio. It's not as loud, not as sharp, uh, still good, but not as effective as I would like. I think overall, this thing is, is awesome though. I mean, if you're looking for a gaming laptop, willing to shell out the cash, roughly around $3,500, uh, this would do the job here. The price is just stick a shock, but I can't complain with the kind of performance this has given me. Uh, that Core i9 processor does the job. It feels like a desktop. I mean, in terms of just performance, the way it plays, it feels like I'm playing on a desktop uh, PC uh, with a 3080, with a Core i9, like, psh, I mean, performance-wise, fantastic, temperatures are great. So, I mean, I can definitely recommend it. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions or any comments about the MSI G76 Radar with a 360 hertz display, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.